Oscar. Right, goes. right above. Yeah. This is pretty much my dream evening. It's a beautiful summer night, and we're out here looking for bats, and we're also collecting bugs, which are two of my favorite animals. I love that chirpy sound. So here's the collections from the two traps, different beetles, different hemipterans. Uh, so there's Neuroptera, which are the lace wings and stuff. So there's, yeah. That's a nice uh, dinner for someone. Yeah, oh yeah, those are huge. We are at the Queen's Zoo, and we are here as a continuation of a study that I began a couple of years ago. We learned that Queen's Zoo has 10 times more bats in the wild than the three other parks. So of course, the question is, why? So this is a, a canopy malaise trap, and this is an insect catching trap. Once they hit the screening, some insects will fly up, and most of them are um, phototaxic, so they're gonna be attracted to this white, and then they'll kind of make this little turn and they'll drop into a jar. The other thing that they can do is they'll take and they will hit the screening and drop down, and then they kind of go down into this funnel and then get collected onto a jar that's connected at the bottom. Just screw this on. We are all set. What we want to do is find out what the bats are eating, and hopefully we'll be able to tie what types of insects are here at Queens that make it such a hotbed for bats right now. Need a bottle of champagne. <laughs> so the idea is to raise a trap up into that area where the bats are going to be foraging. And we know from coming here previously that this is an area where bats are, are routinely flying back and forth. I don't know why we have more bats. I know that when we come out with Colleen, I'm always nervous that we aren't gonna see as many bats as last time. So um, hopefully tonight, we'll still, we'll keep our record intact. Those right, aren't guys, bats. settle down. <laughs> Those aren't bats. I'm gonna go to live mode. Right above. Right over right oh, I got used to red. Yeah. I heard the ping. The app and the device that I'm using makes a bat call audible. Normally, we cannot hear bat calls because they're ultrasonic and they're above our hearing range. I love that sound. I love that chirpy sound. Tick, tick, tick. That would be a really good ringtone. So it really allows you to see the species you're interested in studying and get more information on what they do during the time they're feeding. Here it comes. Right there. Oh, cool. right, right there, right over our heads. I just I think I felt it. <laughs> oh, there oh. it goes. I know, I see it. Oh, nice. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, wow, yeah, there you go. Look at this. It's off the charts. Who <laughs> <laughs> says this isn't fun, right? <laughs> there, it's right over They're all right over our heads. It's like a plane. At the zoo, I work with bats in Jungle World, and I see them all the time. But it's really cool to know that there are bats right out in New York City tons of them, and um, you never really get to see them. This is pretty much my dream evening. It's a beautiful summer night, and we're out here looking for bats, and we're also collecting bugs, which are two of my favorite animals. There he goes. <laughs> wow. I think, look at it, here, right there. circling. <laughs> right there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's so close. <laughs> it's like right there. Once you see the bats in action and almost get hit in the face with them, you can't ask for more than that. It's really cool and rewarding to watch. This is Bat Central. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to call this Bat Central. The survey tonight went really well. We recorded a ton of bats with an array of species. Woo! We're now in year five. We look back at 10 years, and we'll have a really great longitudinal study about bats in an urban environment. Nice job, Queen Zoo. Yeah. Didn't yeah, disappoint nice again. Job. Yes. They always... Bragging rights are still intact. They always deliver.